Check, check. Primary control with critical vehicle function. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey, everybody. Uh, how are you guys doing today? Glad, glad to have you uh, join us here at Mission Control. Uh, looks like it's a it's a cold but clear day here in Colorado, and uh, we see I've added a new little fun intro, and I've got a little closer too. Uh, hopefully today we'll have a better stream than uh, yesterday, and I won't uh, have a silliness of forgetting uh, to switch to any screens. But we'll see how that goes. Uh, so today we're going to talk about pixel mapping. Uh, if you, uh, I put the link in it. Let me see if I can pull it back up here real quick without uh, the world going to heck on me. Uh, stand by one second here. Uh, the show files I'll be using today I put up on a Wii transfer, uh, but I should be able to if I find it real quick here. Um, oh shoot, no, I can't find it, can I? Oh, uh, stand by, sorry. And Facebook's not letting me copy and paste, so we'll uh, try, hopefully uh, Sam can get the link there, 
and uh, so actually I'll send it to him in, in a message and ask him if he can put it up uh, for you guys in there since I cannot get it to uh, I can't type into the uh, chat window right now thanks Facebook So, uh, with that, let's go ahead and just uh, talk about our pixel mapping here. Ah, thank you, Sam, for getting that up there for me. The uh, last of our three shape engines we will have is our pixel mapper. It's a two-dimensional effect generator so that you can lay out your fixtures spatially and create an animation of based effects to play across them. It is not designed to replace the media server, so it will not uh, run anything that only talks video pixels, such as high-resolution LED screen, but will work with anything that runs DMX, ArtNet, or streaming ACN and has either color mix or dimmer channels. Uh, ignore that last little part of that slide there. That would be normally what I have my uh, students do in class. Uh, pixel mapping is done on group layout so that you can have a single fixture in multiple groups to achieve uh, different effects depending on which group you select. The first thing to do uh, is to create a, a group layout. It's important to try and get the layout as close as possible to the real fixtures to get the best result. Uh, to edit a group layout, you go to Shapes and Effects, Pixel Mapper, then press Edit Group Layout on Soft Key B. We then, uh, then prompt you to select a group. Uh, if we select the All Pixel Group, uh, all, all QPix panel group, uh, this is in the show file that uh, Sam just linked out there. Uh, this will open the uh, layout editor. Uh, you can now use wheel, mudge to move the, uh, wheel nudge to move the fixture, and I'll show that all here uh, live. And by the way, the, uh, the file linked is only is a V13 file. I couldn't find my version 11 of this show file. I think I got rid of it uh, uh, after we got to 12.1, figuring I wouldn't end up going back to version 11 and uh, didn't think ahead, I guess. So uh, let's switch on over to our mobile display here. And we see we've got a, a larger show file loaded than we have in the past. Uh, if we go into, uh, uh, blah, 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 if we go to our shapes and effects, pixel mapper, and then edit group layout, and I select this all pix, uh, all QPix panel group here, you see it opens up our, uh, our group here, which is laid out like our real world fixtures are. Uh, and we can see that here at the bottom, we've got one fixture that's kind of off. Uh, it's almost like I planned this. Uh, so we want to make this fixture uh, be like our rest. So if we click on it, uh, we can then uh, click and then click a second time and drag it and put it in the right place. Or I'll slide it back. We can use our wheels uh, to move it uh, into the proper place or out of the proper place if we need to. Uh, then back into it. And to save a group layout, you simply just close the window, but we're not going to do that yet. We're going to talk about some of the other stuff that uh, you can do in this menu. So this will be in the context menu. I uh, remember that's on your consoles. It's going to be just to the left of soft keys, uh, uh, B, C, and D on the Titan one and the Sapphire. It's going to be on the four lines button. Uh, that would be uh, this bad boy up here again. And instead of having it laid out flat like we see in that image there, you would have it uh, here. Uh, laid out across it. So we'll go across everything in that window real quick. So we see here we've got uh, the button we can enable or disable, uh, touch and drag. Uh, we can auto, uh, auto crop the grid to the fixtures, which we'll do on our uh, other one after we get back to it. Arrange fixtures enters the arrange menu. I'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, snap cells to grid. Uh, we'll automatically snap them in. Highlight enables the highlight function. So just like we saw with other things, uh, using highlight the other day, uh, we can use highlight to try and find, uh, let us know which fixture we're actually controlling uh, at that time to make it a little easier to uh, figure out and uh, control it and put it in the right place. Uh, if we've also got uh, uh, position and angle, uh, wheels can be set to position angle, cell size, or no wheel control. All of that was new for version 12. Uh, we have the uh, move full pixel, move sub pixels at a time. So you can move uh, a pixel half on or have it automatically snap to uh, completely full. Uh, we can also uh, 
uh, rotate the fixture or a selection of them, and we'll show how, what that does. So you either have it rotate the fixture itself or rotate like the whole line of fixtures. Uh, and media options is used for video overlay and AI, and we'll go over that uh, tomorrow when we do uh, the synergy uh, section. So let's switch back to our mobile, and we'll uh, play with a couple of things in our context menu. Uh, then again, I'm using the Titan Go interface uh, with a mobile hooked up. That's why I keep saying that. Uh, so, but uh, just the Titan Go interface makes things a little easier so I can show you guys everything on the screen. Uh, so if we have the highlight function enabled, we'll go ahead and turn it on. And uh, bring, we'll, uh, why is it not coming up? And then if we should be able to make this small and you should be able to see it coming out but it is not uh, let me exit out of here real quick and clear I'm gonna select our Hupix panels Actually close this window now we'll hit clear our Hupix panels put their dimmer at full and now if we go back into uh, shapes and effects uh, pixel mapper edit group layout select the group we want to edit and we'll zoom out on here and we'll just say I have the one selected and we'll go back in and turn highlight on and now we can see in our capture the one we have selected has turned uh, yellow and we can also show that in our larger capture it might be a little easier to see see if uh, see how I like that I uh, can see that the one in the uh, bottom left there has turned yellow because that's the one we have currently selected if we select another fixture see that it turns yellow we select multiple fixtures that they all uh, do the same thing, just like high, just go into the highlight states. Uh, with the, uh, let's go and make this full size again. And zoom this to fit the window more correctly. And I'll switch back just to our plain mobile display, uh, leaving a capture off for a second. If we uh, set our uh, uh, wheels to, uh, to position and angle, uh, cell scale, or no wheel control position and angle. If we rotate it, uh, if we have our wheels set to rotate uh, selection, we'll see that it will rotate the whole line of fixtures. Or if we set it to uh, rotate individual fixtures, we do the same thing, we see that each individual fixture rotates rather than the whole line of them. If we uh, also go into uh, wheels, move full pixels or sub pixels, we can have them move sub uh, sub pixels if we want. Uh, let's talk about the arrange fixtures menu. So here now we'll see down our soft keys. We've got uh, uh, width, uh, height, uh, arrange in rows, uh, crop grid to fixtures, uh, entire group, uh, shape equal rectangle, and OK. Uh, so we can set it to width and height. I have it arranged in rows uh, co or columns. We can have it do uh, have it automatically crop the grid to the fixtures or not. We can have it do the, the entire group or just the selected fixtures. Uh, we can take our shape to uh, rectangle, oval, triangle, and back to rectangle. Now, one thing to uh, remember about this is that it uses the uh, uh, number of pixels, not the number of fixtures. So, if you uh, we see here we've got these fixtures. If I was going to do these are five cell wide, five cell tall. Uh, and I've got what one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight of them. If I did eight wide, this whole row would be wrapped on top of each other, not uh, not right next to each other. If I wanted them to all be right next to each other, I'd have to do it at 40 wide because again, it goes by the number of pixels or cells, not the number of fixtures. So that's just one thing to remember uh, to put in the back of your head. Uh, but we're happy with all that. So we're gonna go back into our context menu and tell it to crop the grid. Uh, so it gets rid of that uh, extra space that was off the side. And to save a layout, uh, simply all you have to do is close the window. And I see uh, uh, Sam bringing up the red and green cells uh, so you can help you orient the, t orient the fixtures. Uh, this is true, so you can help tell which one's the first one in the fixture order, which one's the last, and help you orient your fixtures uh, much easier. So to save that, uh, we simply just click Exit. And we're gonna go ahead and hit Clear. Uh, now uh, we can start doing a uh, pixel layer. Let's go back to our uh, slides for a moment. And let's go ahead and we'll talk about our uh, effect editor. 
Uh, so if we go back to our mobile for a quick second and we hit, uh, uh, we then select the group group we just laid out. So it's all laid out now. We can hit create effect and it brings up our uh, pixel mapper or our, excuse me, our effect editor. So we'll go through and talk about everything that uh, each one of these can do. So in the uh, upper left-hand corner of it, you've got the hide or show effect button, the layer. Uh, once you add a layer, you can see its element and any animations you've added to it. Uh, we've got down at the bottom left, we've got the black hole sun button. Uh, black hole sun button, is, as we like to call it, is basically, uh, I call it the equivalent of hit locate, but for pixel mapping. So what that does is set your intensity to full and your colors to quote unquote black. Uh, so it will, uh, your fixtures are basically ready to start pixel mapping on. Uh, check marks box can select multiple layers, the move layer up and down button. Uh, so we can reorder our layers, uh, the trash bin delete and the plus button to add another layer. Uh, the layers up and down, uh, higher numbers farther forward, lower numbers farther back, just like with Photoshop, you can layer something. So a, number, a higher number layer is more to the front, a lower number layer is more towards the back. Uh, we've got the, uh, the effect editor preview area where you can show the overlay or not, and I'll show that here in a moment. Uh, down below that, we've got our effect editor uh, layer master. Uh, when we first have our layer, we can, set, we can set its color to use a master or not. We can set its position, its rotation, its opacity, and its zoom. Once we add an element uh, to our uh, map here, we can then control different items about it, such as its opacity, its position, its rotation, its size, uh, its zoom it, as well as certain things about that particular element. And again, we'll play with all that in a moment. Once you add, add an animation, uh, you can set you control its speed, uh, you can randomize its speed, its spawn rate, and you can randomize its, its spawn, uh, spawn four, uh, if you want it forever, to keep doing it forever or a certain number of times, basically cycles for a uh, uh, pixel map. Uh, there's time in and out. Uh, run for and then how many times you want it to run and then what do you want it to do? You want it to kill it or freeze, so it basically pauses the last frame on, on the uh, effect or completely kills it. We also set its start angle and its end angle if it was a rotation, which I think this one happens to be. Uh, some, some tips for Pixel Master, uh, use the plus button to add an element to a layer. Elements can be pre-made, text, quick sketch, or imported images. I always like to bring up to everybody to uh, think about importing images, uh, think about the resolution, you know. In our, in our little uh, example we have here today, it's, you know, 40 pixels wide and uh, not much more tall. You take an HD image, which is, you know, 1920 by 1080, and squish it down to that 40 by uh, whatever it is exactly on our map here. What's it going to look like? Mud. Not gonna look like anything, so you know. Uh, don't just tell your clients you can put their logo up on the LED uh, wall because if it's a real complex logo, it may not work out so well for you. So try to think about that. Uh, we can use the plus button again to add animation to an element. Uh, multiple objects and animations can be added per layer. Let's see what our next slide is. Uh, use run for to set the number of cycles and effect runs. Uh, set and then they control what the effect does uh, after the cycles finish. Uh, spawn for sets how many elements will be spawned after this. No more will appear. Uh, use the bin to delete a, delete a layer or element to start over if you're unhappy with it. You can also see how fixtures fit in the animations of the context menus. In the context options, you can uh, toggle between the fixture level relay between off, 50 50, and on. Uh, pixel maps can be saved as palettes. Uh, and that's one is again just for stuff when I usually have a uh, class full of students. But we will uh, let's go ahead and switch back over to our mobile display and do some playing uh, rather than uh, talking about it. So we see here we still got our effect editor open. If we uh, go in here to our uh, context menu, uh, we see our fixture overlay is turned off. I can turn it 50-50 or on. Uh, you can see 50-50 kind of makes it a little dimmer. Uh, uh, on sets it uh, a little bit better. I usually like to leave it on. That way I can get a representation of what my fixture is going to look like uh, in comparison to the actual map that I'm making. Uh, some people don't like it. If you don't like it, you can always shut it off, but I think it's great to have it on. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do for today. I'm going to go ahead and hit my black hole sun button so my fixtures are uh, ready to start uh, pixel mapping with. And if I uh, go ahead and select layer one and give it a color, I'm going to go and make it, uh, we'll make it blue today. 
I think he adjusts his opacity, his position left and right, its zoom, and its rotation. Uh, I'm going to leave it as those as is. Then I'm going to click my plus button down here and choose an element. Again, I can choose from the pre-made ones that are here, uh, text, a uh, quick sketch so I can actually draw one in, uh, the file folders where I could pull in uh, uh, file or images uh, to use uh, in the uh, Pixel Mapper and AI. The AI looking button is Force Energy, which we'll uh, explore tomorrow. Uh, but today, let's go ahead and I like to use this uh, uh, fan looking one. I don't know why I like it, but I do. Uh, now that I've added it, I can control its, op its opacity. I can adjust its position left and right, up and down. Uh, I can make it wider or taller. Or I can just use zoom and just make it bigger overall. Uh, I can set its rotation, so instead of having it look like a plus sign, make it look more like an X. I can control the bend of the arms, make it less swoopy or more swoopy. I kind of like get swoopy with it. I can control the border width on it. Make it wider or less. Uh, I keep scrolling down here. I can set a points have a four. I can have it be uh, five or six if I wanted. I uh, can control the thickness of the arms, how the arms look. I can make them bigger or smaller. I'm going to go ahead and make it about like that, I think. Uh, once I'm happy with that, I can click the plus button down here again to add an animation. I can do a rotation, a slide effect, a zoom effect, a fade in and out, a uh, displacement effect, and, uh, golly, what's the last one? Uh, brain fart. Uh, it does some uh, multiple instances stuff also as well, some visual effects of having it uh, fuzzy. We're not going to do those. We're going to just do a rotation. And we see now that I've got a rotation going here. If I bring up Capture, and it, we can see that it's doing it on our uh, real-world fixtures uh, right now also. So we'll switch back to this for a quick moment. And I'm going to pause. I am thirsty and can't reach my soda, so we'll pause for a second and see if you guys got any questions. Uh, thanks, Sam. Yes, the last one there with the uh, uh, multiple blocks uh, next to the uh, displacement one uh, lines up your elements to the grid references. Uh, so thank you for uh, correcting me on that, my friend. I uh, don't forget, Nigel, you can, you can pixel map on anything. Uh, it doesn't have to be an LED wall like this. It could be park hands. It could be, uh, like in this show file here, the BMFLs. Uh, anything can be used. Uh, it's just however many of them you have is what kind of resolution of your screen is, basically. Oh, there's one in every group, Nigel. Uh, you would use Quick Sketch to draw your phallic images. Now that I've had my sip and you guys have uh, caught up, uh, let's slide over uh, back here again. And uh, let's go ahead and select our second layer. And we'll make it, uh, we're going to make it red. And then I'm going to uh, just leave all that stock is fine. Uh, I'm going to hit my plus button here. And this time I'm going to use uh, text. And I'm going to change the font to this one. And then I'm going to slide it off to the side here a little bit. Actually, I'm going to zoom it up first, make it a little bigger. And zoom and slide it off to the side. And now I'm going to click my plus button again. And I'll use the slide effect. I can see that I've got it now sliding in. My spawn rate's a little high, so let's kick that down a little bit. So there's a little bit of separation between them. And it gets all the way off the screen before it comes back. May have gone too low. Set it to point to enter. Let's see if that makes me happier. And yeah, close enough for close enough for playing's sake. Uh, if we bring up our capture display again, we can see it's running uh, just like that on our real world fixtures. If we uh, we go ahead and select layer three, and we can hit the plus button, and uh, we'll do a quick sketch this time, and uh, we will draw a rocket ship. That's a credit rocket ship service, so we'll do this. 
with smoke below it because it's taking off and we can hit enter and then we'll zoom it up a little bit and uh, move it down and then we'll give it a movement element and we'll set its direction to be zero Actually, we'll do it like this and then we'll select our element and give it a bit of a rotation and then we'll position it a little more over here there you go now you've got a rocket ship flying across the uh, screen for you and uh, once I don't, if I decide I don't like my rocket ship, I can always just select it and hit the trash bin and get rid of it. So uh, now that we've had our uh, rocket ship fun, uh, if we're happy with our pixel map, we can simply uh, save it to a uh, playback. We'll go to find an empty playback page. We can then hit record. Uh, set our fixture mode to be whatever we wanted it to be for this particular uh, pixel map. We're going to just leave it in fixture mode and select our one here. And then we can hit exit and clear and uh, close our effect editor so we can see. And we see if we fire it up, we can see it on our internal capture and our external capture at the same time. We could have seen it on our internal capture before. It's just uh, there's only so much screen real estate to work with here. So any questions to uh, this point? Uh, yes, you can use copy and move uh, in uh, the effect editor, as Sam said. Uh, something to do very often, but it can be done. Mute, unmute. Well, let's go ahead and uh, turn this play back off and go ahead and select our, our fixtures again and then shapes and effects, pixel mapper, and uh, create effect. We've got our pixel, our effect editor uh, back up again. We remember to hit our black hole sun button. Uh, so we set our fixtures to full intensity and black in color so that they're ready to write a pixel map with. Uh, let's go ahead and on this one, I want to turn on the use master and I'll explain why uh, in a little bit here. Uh, once we've uh, done that, uh, we can set it a color. We'll do this obnoxious green because I know Sam loves my obnoxious green colors. And we'll uh, hit our plus button, add an element, and we'll do a pinwheel. And let's see here, let's muck about with it. Let's make it a little, a little thicker. And give it more and more turns to it. And then we'll go to make our lines a little thinner. And let's make it bigger so it fills the whole screen. And then let's add an element to it. Let's give it a spin again. But I want it to spin in the opposite direction on this one. So what I can do here is I can go to my uh, start angle and set it to the opposite direction. Okay, now we've got it spinning the opposite way. Uh, let's see here. I could... Uh, let's see, let's add another animation to it. We'll go ahead and put a movement blur on it. And you can see how it kind of blurs uh, the line here at the end. So you can see it kind of, kind of leaving a trail of it, so to speak. Uh, let's say that we're uh, relatively happy with that. Uh, we'll add another layer to it. We'll just leave this layer. Actually, no, we're going to change this layer to uh, blue. And whoops, clicked off of it. And we'll hit our plus button and we'll use the star. 
and we'll give it a zoom effect and we'll give it a displacement effect oops displacement we'll do Sort of spawn rate a little higher. So it does so it's an obnoxious amount of stars. There we go. An obnoxious amount of stars. So uh, say we like this and we want to save it as a palette. So I'm just going to close the effect editor uh, and click exit. And then I'm going to do open workspace window. And then I'm going to find my shapes and effects window. And you can see here I've actually already recorded one, but we're going to go ahead and record this one. So we can do here, we can just double click an empty box in it. And we now see that we've made a, whoops, we have made a palette of these and that can be used on any fixtures. I'll show you guys that in a minute. So we'll go ahead and just record this one uh, to an empty playback and then hit clear. So now if I was to select my QPix panels and uh, go ahead and set their intensity to full and then click my palette, we can see that we get that same uh, effect running and we'll uh, actually, I have it up on full capture ready because I left it up. <laughs> what an what invitation non switch. Uh, if I uh, go ahead and clear that and go ahead and grab my uh, BMFLs and we'll locate them just to have some of the point and straight down. And then we'll give them uh, some intensity and then click the same palette. And it's going to be a pain in my butt. This may, may not have been the best one for it. Uh, so actually we'll select these and use this one instead. Take our intensity to full. And we'll be our effect editor and hit our black hole sun button. There we go. We can see that using the creep layout, which doesn't work necessarily good for this pixel effect, but I've been able to play back that palette on uh, any uh, fixture. So let's clear it again, select it, effect editor, hit our black hole sun, and then hit this one. We can see the uh, stars coming in there at random and kind of moving around it. So again, you don't have to use pixel mapping on a uh, low uh, wall of LEDs. Uh, actually, another one might be actually work well for this is these fixtures. Let me locate them. And then we'll go to bring up our effect editor just to cheat, make it quickly that way. And then we fire this one in. We can see it playing across there. Or if I do AVO and back to undo that palette and select this one instead, uh, we can see the stars coming in at random and popping uh, in our swirly, doing the swirly swirly. So yes, accidental drink. Yes, Jay, definitely. Uh, so you guys can see uh, what we're doing uh, there. Uh, one thing that's going to uh, be a bummer for this particular stream is I forgot to start recording it at the start. So uh, it's going to go up on the Facebook as the lower quality uh, Facebook stream, unfortunately. Uh, I just am not used to this uh, start to hit. I haven't gotten used to uh, recording it yet, so we'll just have to do it that way for this one. Uh, tomorrow, Synergy will make sure we get in uh, a full HD version of it up onto the Book of Faces. So I'm just going to go ahead and clear those out, and let's swap back over to our slides for a minute, and let's talk about Pixel Mapper Layer Master. A Pixel Mapper Master allows each layer into a Pixel Map effect to be used in single playbacks. This allows you more control, as well as the ability to change uh, colors of those layers. Uh, to view a Pixel Mapper Layer, uh, the playback has to be recorded with the master enabled for each layer has been fired at full, and then each playback can be individually fired. Uh, the color has disappeared from each layer, which allows the user to then change color. Uh, for changing colors, select the blue swap up into the layer master, and then you can use color palettes or not. Uh, these won't store those color values permanently to the layer playbacks. I think that's the last slide we even have for today. It is. So let's swap back over here to our mobile display, and we'll have a little bit of fun here. Uh, so if we... Uh, this is the playback we recorded earlier with a playback, a uh, Pixel Mapper Layer Master on it. And as we can see here, it uh, took all the green away from it, made it white. And that's because of the Pixel Mapper. And I'll show you how that uh, works in a moment here. So if we hit record, whoops, let's update, haha, record, and then create master. 
and we choose Pixel Mapper, and we choose between our layers one, two, three, and four. Uh, we only told layer one of this playback to use uh, a master, so we'll just go ahead and put it right here to make it easy. And then we'll AVO exit out of this menu, take us all the way back up to the top. Uh, so now we'll see if we fire this uh, playback with this master at zero. Uh, we don't get, we don't see that uh, green swirly anymore. But if I bring out, so get my master up, we can see that it now uh, reappears. I'm going to go ahead and ah, we'll leave it on this display for a moment uh, while we muck about with this. So if I hit the blue button of our uh, layer master here, we can now see that on my wheels display, I now have different controls. Uh, if I go through my our different uh, attributes of opacity, so I can turn uh, the layer up and down intensity wise as I wish. Uh, I can go to position, I can move it left and right and up and down. I can control its colors, so I can just set in colors as I want uh, using my wheels, or uh, if I have color palettes that actually contain colors for these uh, fixtures, which for some reason I didn't record all of my palettes with it. If I can hit red palette and go straight to red, or hit the green palette, or aqua -y. I'm a little more aqua-y aqua -y looking, I can talk. Uh, I can set it that way. Uh, Gobo, we can control the angle, which is a little hard to see something that's spinning. Uh, beam, we can control the zoom of it, so we can zoom it up or down as we wish, make it a small little swirly or a big honking swirly. Uh, effect doesn't do anything and special doesn't do anything. Uh, again, angle kind of with something that's spinning, mucking about with angles, it, with angles kind of hard to really see. Uh, so basically what you do with a pixel mapper layer master is you're setting, uh, uh, <laughs> yes, pre fire shake, let's start recording. Yes, that is definitely a, uh, a new one that I need to do. Uh, Basically, with the Pixel Mapper Layer Master, it just gives you c control of a layer as a fixture live. Uh, I know some. There's a gentleman uh, that I've done a class with. That what he did is he takes uh, grayscale images and uses them through uh, the Pixel Mapper, and then uh, uses Layer Masters to get really kind of funky, hippy dippy stuff going. He likes to do a lot of those hippy dippy shows and get some really cool visuals going that way. Uh, not just on uh, LED walls like this, but just on regular. Uh, regular old fixtures. So, uh, that's usually everything I really have to show when it comes to the uh, pixel mapper. So, because uh, it's really not that hard, we can sit here and play with it for a long time. Uh, but what are your guys' questions? Uh, give me something to uh, play with. Uh, Curry, what's FFT? Uh, sure, Sam, we can bring that up uh, if we do open workspace window. And then we do... Oops. Pixel Mapper Preview window, uh, which is basically uh, if we have... Let's see here. Let's move it over here. And we'll do it with our beams. And we'll put their dimmers at full. And here we can see that it plays, uh, puts the effect on uh, Pixel Mapper Preview Window, similar to the effect editor, uh, but just another place to see it. And we can see the cells uh, of the of these fixtures, which don't have multiple cells; they only have uh, one cell each because they're just a Roby uh, 150 150 beam. Uh, so that's kind of handy. Another one. Oh, dang it. Yep, you did get me, Sam. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, rat bastard. So, we're going to close all that. I'm going to start that little part over. Thanks, Sam. Uh, so, if we uh, do open workspace window and then we find Pixel Mapper Preview, it brings up this window here. Uh, so that if we were to, say, select our beam 150s and set their intensity to full, and use this uh, palette I already have here, we basically see the same thing we would see in the effect editor, uh, but in a little bit of a preview. 
kind of handy for another way to see the way things uh, look. And uh, dang it, Sam. Dang you, dang you, dang you. I apparently missed uh, Nigel's question that Sam uh, has answered there. Let's see if I can scroll it and add to it any. I'm not seeing Nigel's posting at all. Oh, I love how Facebook just uh, throws your guys' stuff on out and I can't see anything. So, uh, any other questions you guys may have uh, with Pixel Mapper here? Let's see here. Uh, so you guys haven't asked anything. Let's we'll have a quick, another little bit more of a poke in here. And we'll throw up uh, both displays. And let's see here. I don't remember what this one is. Let's let's find out. Apparently, it's uh, that. Oh, it's a spinny with a. Uh, Ava running across it uh, wouldn't be the first time I've made uh, that particular palette, it looks like. If we were to clear that, I draw Cupix panels and run that one. That's a little easier to see with a higher resolution. Let's see if we can get a decent, uh, let's muck about here. And we'll go to the effect editor. And, whoops. There we go. So let's let clear one. Let's make it uh, red. Plus button here, and we'll make it a bar. And let's see here, we'll make its height. Height's really tall, but its width really small. And then we'll put off to the side here. It's width a little less. There we go. Then do plus and do R. And then if we do copy. Two let's make you red. And I do his direction the other way. I 
Oops, we gotta do its position. So close. Trying to make it do a Knight Rider back and forth, but uh, sometimes I can get it to do it if I get my timing just right and sit there and play with it. You can get the back and forth going on it. Actually, it's not too, uh, it's not too bad right now from the one side. But if I take this one and I do its position just a little more off. for restarting it now see if that fixes it so close anyhow uh <laughs> playing around yeah, let's look back here and see if anyone's got an actually question Uh, can you set a range for the X and Y when it goes off the grid? Uh, not exactly. Uh, it's just it it uh, it has to do with the, where it starts on and off the grid is a percentage base. So zero or one percent is going to be all the way to the left, and uh, higher than that's going to be uh, off to the uh, right of it. Uh, higher than one hundred percent will be off to the right. Oops, I never hit a black hole sun button, so we don't even see it in the full region of capture. There it goes. I said they need to fiddle around with my uh, uh, spawn rates and positioning a little bit more, and I think I can get it to uh, to do it more better. Yes, Jay, this would be a lot easier if we had a bounce effect, uh, which we do not, unfortunately. But it's not too bad overall. I mean, I'd sit there and play with it more if I really wanted to. So at this point, I feel like I'm kind of just screwing around here. Uh, do you guys have any other actual uh, questions? Uh, I'm also thinking if uh, of doing, a, if you guys want to, you guys saw the little lead I did today and the, I'll have a little closer too. If you think you're graphics, a better graphics designer than I am, which shouldn't be very hard because I absolutely suck at it, and want to uh, redo the graphics for my intro and outro, uh, go ahead and email me and uh, let me get it typed in here on my iPad. Uh, go ahead and email me, and I'll send you the uh, uh, audio files, and you can make a new uh, lead and tail for me if you think you're better, and I'll give you credit in the uh, Facebook video uh, for it. Oh, so you got a couple quick questions in here. Uh, we can go into the editor again here in one second, Tim. 
uh, one of the fixtures I'm using in this particular example, they are Elation QPix panels, is what I'm using in today's. Uh, if so, if we switch back over here to uh, Layout Editor, we can go and uh, mess about with it again. Uh, so I'm just going to clear this out of the programmer and close our effect editor uh, and our pixel mapper preview window and just exit all the way back out. Uh, so again, the layout editor, uh, did you have a specific uh, question about it, Tim? Or, uh, I mean, you can always just rewatch the video to get the uh, start of it again, uh, but we can uh, show it again. So there's two ways to actually get to it. We go through with the shapes and effects, uh, pixel mapper, and then edit group layout here, or we can go to uh, group, uh, edit group, select the group we want to edit, in this case, the QPix panel, and then we adjust either its fixture order or its layout, and we'll do the layout, and we see that we've got the uh, fixture layout here. Uh, and actually, here, why don't we show more of the uh, range, uh, since now we've done all the rest of the lessons, I don't have to fix all this. Uh, let's talk about the range. So if I select all the fixtures, and then go into my range menu, boo -boo -boo. I set my width to, uh, we'll see, we'll set our width to, 40 and hit enter and we see that it put all of our fixtures right next to each other let me get closer so we can see it they didn't all next to each other even though we have eight fixtures wide uh they're all lined up right next to each other if i was to do uh that again and set row width at eight or set row width at eight instead of at 40 and hit enter that it does uh basically put all of our fixtures in one big long line uh overlapped on each other so we'll do a little range fixtures again, and we'll set it back to 40. Hit enter, and see that we get our full-on block there. If we did it, uh, wanted to put the separation in it, and we did uh, set our width at 60. Hit enter. So we'll do our, uh, so let's do that again. Let's do our width at 60 and our height at 40. Oh, it's not putting any separation in for me. Just to be a pain in my butt. Uh, we'll go ahead and enter our range menu again. Uh, let's make it, uh, let's do it arrange it in an oval. Let's also, oops. And hit OK. See, I made our fixtures in a big circle instead. Or we could do, uh, Make it a triangle and hit OK, and see that it laid out our fixtures in a triangle. Oops. There's one time I w don't really don't like the uh, context menu being on the quote unquote four lines button because it takes uh, extra steps to uh, do everything. If we go back to rectangle and hit OK, you can see that it put them all back to how we were before. So I think I saw a question over here. Uh, yes, you could muck about with a pixel map with an audio trigger. However, I'm using a Titan Mobile and don't have audio triggers uh, on it. I would need to use a Quartz and Arena or uh, have a T2 hooked up uh, to the mobile, which I do not currently. Well, fixed order can be whatever you want it to be, Tim. Uh, it, doesn't go, it doesn't necessarily go left to right. You can make it go right to left. That's all in what you uh, set your fixture order to be. Uh, on pixels, uh, we got to remember fixture order and group layout are extremely closely related. Uh, so if we let, say we'll just leave this uh, like this and we go ahead and close it and then we do group, edit group, we'll select the same group and we do fixture order. Uh, why are you not showing it to me? Just to be a pain in my butt. Please show... It should be on the back wall. No, it should be Qpix wall. There we are. And we can see that uh, multiple fixtures have one now because they're in that line uh, that they are in our layout. So if we go back to our layout and we'll make it, we'll do our arrange and do our width as four. See, it's got one big, long line of fixtures now, right? All the fixtures are basically in one big line. 
So now if I go into uh, group, edit group, select same group, and do fixture order, see there's a whole lot of number ones now because they're all number one in the row. Does that make more sense now? I have to show that more uh, distinctly if we go back into uh, our layout editor. And we do again, we do groups, edit group, make sure that group selected, edit its layout. And drag the grid here, and then we use our wheel nudge to move everything along to here, and then close it. We even clear this, and then if we do group, edit groups, make sure that group selected it is. Feature order. We well, now see that our orders, they all start with 16 because we moved them over to there, right? Does that make more sense now? Oh, also in the uh, file I linked at the start of it, it does have the uh, patch report for that capture file, for that capture presentation file. Uh, if you want to repatch it in version 11, uh, you're welcome to uh, use that to uh, make your own patch and play with it in version 11. Sorry, I don't have a version 11 file uh, available. So if uh, there are no other questions, we're about on an hour today. We might just go ahead and uh, cut her out for today. Uh, as always, I remember you can find our trainings uh, going on over here. If we, uh, if I can find the right freaking, no, that's I think I turned it off. Uh, we can go to uh, our U.S. training site, the online resources. Uh, go to our training events webpage here, and let me. Really. And we scroll on it. Uh, let's see here. So tomorrow, uh, as we know, will be uh, Synergy. And then Thursday, we're going to do Blind Mode and Scene Master, though we've kind of played about with them some. We'll do it again, uh, as well as Key Profiles. And Friday will be uh, Show Import and Fixture Mapping, as well as User Settings. And then week after that, we're going to do uh, Networking, uh, Multi-User and Backup, uh, DMX Merge. And then uh, on Tuesday, the 21st, we're going to do some useful features and macros, and hopefully uh, Mr. Seb is still on board to join us for uh, macros next week. I'm kind of excited about that because he is the master of macros, and I love uh, every time that I see Seb talking about him. He just makes me uh, happy because I learn something every time he uh, speaks about macros. So that should be a good old time. Uh, so again... Uh, we can always get uh, our online enableice.com slash online resources. Should have a list of classes that only AI I'm doing, that Gordon and uh, Aaron are doing with AI. Uh, the enableites.us page for our training events that uh, we'll be doing here. Uh, and uh, uh, once we get back into the swing of things, going out and doing them in person. Our last one is our Avalites USA uh, YouTube channel where this uh, will be reloaded up to uh, as soon as possible. And should be in the future, I'll have... Uh, uh, HD versions of them uploaded, but like I said today, I forgot to click start recording, so we're just going to have to deal with the low-res version of it. Uh, and again, if you haven't uh, subscribed to that one, please do me a favor and hop on there and subscribe. Uh, and with that, I will leave you guys with my, loose, my nifty new little closer, and we'll see you guys tomorrow uh, for Synergy. Wheel stop. Roger, wheel stop, Discovery. Welcome back. A great ending to the new beginning.